This is One Man's Family. One Man's Family is dedicated to the mothers and fathers of the younger generation and to their bewildering offspring. Today transcribed, we present Chapter 12, Book 72, entitled, A Touch of Christmas Spirit. Early on this December day, a pelting rain washed the air and swept the streets and waterfront of San Francisco. And now, in the afternoon, from the hills of Seacliff, through bright winter sunshine, you can see the green of distant countryside and, sharply outlined above the water, the graceful span of the Golden Gate Bridge. There is the faint fragrance of wood smoke in the air, for this is the season for hearth fires and pungent eucalyptus wood. The holiday season in California is like the Christmas season everywhere. Houses snug against the chill of wintry weather and an air of expectancy about the land. In the cozy library in the family home in Seacliff, Mother Barber is having a heart-to-heart talk with Clifford. A Christmas means so much to your father, Clifford. When he comes back from his walk, why don't you... Well, why don't you sit down and talk with him for a little while and make up? Mom, make up? What do you mean? We're getting along fine. You're formal, Clifford. Huh? Clifford, you're formal with each other. Now you know you are. He hasn't forgotten that fuss you had about Paul, and you haven't either. Why don't you just pretend it didn't happen? He's beginning to feel the Christmas spirit, I think. He's humming Christmas songs under his breath. Well, I don't know what more I can do, Mom. Well, you can talk Christmas with him. He loves to just sit and talk about Christmas. Listen. Henry! Yes, Henry. Have you looked out at this wintry day? It's a beautiful, sparkling afternoon. There's a nice fire here in the library, too. Come on in. You see, he's just as happy as he can be. Now, don't spoil it and act so formal with him. Yeah, I know, Mom. I've been trying. Just forget you had a fuss. Just erase it. Oh, Oh, hi, Dad. Yes, yes, Clifford. Henry, I tell you, there's no season like it. When I came along the street just now, the fragrance of wood smoke and the crisp wintry air, why, real Christmas weather. (sighs) Doesn't that fire smell good? It's nice and warm here. There's nothing like the smell of a good crackling eucalyptus fire. Oh, did you have a nice walk there? Yes, yes. I I saw Margaret and Penelope and Sharon, and every one of them had that special, bright, expectant look you see on children's faces at this time of the year. They're they're counting the days now, you know. (laughs) They they were roller skating to a little chant. Nine more days, nine more days. Saturday, Sunday, nine more days. Why don't you and Clifford both sit down here and I'll bring a plate of Christmas cookies and some tea. Oh, uh, not, uh, not tea, Fanny. I'll tell you what I'd like. Milk, hmm? Crisp Christmas cookies and a glass of milk. Eh, Clifford? Well, I'm not very hungry, thanks. Well, we just had lunch, Dad. <laughs> but I've been walking. You bring it in, Fanny. He won't be able to resist Christmas cookies when he sees them. They're the star-shaped ones, Clifford, uh, sprinkled with those little candies. <laughs> we'll, we'll gedunk them, eh? Uh, that's what's good. Christmas cookies gedunked in rich coal milk. <laughs> you both sit down, and I'll be right back. <laughs> Notice the bridge out there, Clifford. Why, it's so clear this afternoon, you can almost see the nuts and bolts in it. Yeah, Dad, it sure stands out, doesn't it? Yes, yes. It was the rain this morning. Washed everything. It's really beautiful. Yeah. Yes, it is. Where did you go on your walk? Uh Oh, I drove down, walked along the waterfront. Uh, Paul been home? Yeah, uh, he he had lunch at the airport and just came home to change his clothes. He's going shopping with Christine Abbott this afternoon. He'd be home for dinner, did he say? I don't think so, Dad. Dinner with Mrs. Abbott again? That's right. Yes, yes, yes. 
I I understand we're going to telephone Nicholas in London on Christmas Day. Yeah, I thought he's got the number where he'll be. <laughs> I used to think when I was reading so much Dickens, I'd like to be in London some Christmas with the Christmas carolers and the English puddings and the big old fireplaces. <laughs> well, now I know that never in my life do I want to be anywhere but right here at Christmas, Clifford. Do you realize that parts of California are like the land of the nativity, my boy? Huh? Yes, and we, of all people in America, could truly celebrate Christmas with the same sort of plants and flowers for decorations that might be used in Bethlehem. Yes. Oh, a family. Uh, come here, come in. We're, we're having a fine Christmassy talk. Oh, here, Mom, let me help. Oh, hey, a pitcher of milk. Why the extra glasses? I saw Hazel heading this way, and Claudia may drop in. <coughs> Thank you, Clifford. There. Put it right there. <laughs> Look at those Christmas cookies, eh? There's a nice tradition, I think. The Christmas cookies. They taste better than ever at this season. <laughs> Hazel stopped to talk to Nicolette, I think. But she'll be along. There, Henry. Uh, thank you, Henry. Dear it? Go on. Uh, Fanny, uh, pour another glass. He'll join me. I remember when Paul used to be around home more. Now, Henry. Yes, yes. Uh, I was merely going to say that he used to like that as much as I do. Hello, what's happening? Oh, hi, Hazel. Come and see. Mm. Hello, Hazel. Oh, Mother. Mm. Why, Father, shame on you. I won't let the children do that. Cliff? Hi. Huh? You won't let the children dunk cookies? Oh, ho, ho. I'll have to have a talk with your children on Christmas morning, Hazel. I'll say that one's manners may uh, may uh, bend with the seal. <laughs> sit down, sit down. Oh, I have a package out here that I want to hide first. I'll be right back. <laughs> That's the sort of thing that makes for excitement on the children's faces. <laughs> the hidden packages. <laughs> you open a closet door, and there in their colorful wrapping, you... Oh. What is it, Henry? I forgot. <laughs> I have something hidden in the closet myself. <laughs> I have a new and interesting new kind of Christmas wreath. I'll go... Oh, I'll get it, then. Oh, uh, will, will you, Clifford? It's in the hall closet. It's a round package, uh, brown paper. Oh, you okay, then. When you were at Jack's the other day, Fanny, a young man came to the door here. He was working his way through college, a sophomore at Berkeley. And his father made plastic Christmas wreaths in his basement. What did you say, Henry? A plastic Christmas wreaths. A plastic, Henry. I never heard of such a thing. Hey, isn't this it? That's right, here. Uh, give it to me, here. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, the salesman was a very, very bright-faced, alert young man named, named Yonches, uh, Wilby Yonches. And his father has learned how to make plastic leaves and holly berries and plastic ribbons down in his basement. Oh, really, Henry? Yeah, a splendid idea, isn't it? Well, I... Yeah, then you don't have to go out and buy a new wreath each year. There it is, you see. You just put it away with the Christmas tree lights, and there it is. Yeah, I'll unwrap it. He showed me a sample, a little one, the day he was here. A very attractive. Oh, <laughs> remember, Fanny? Remember the very morning that, that young man called you and said that I was reactionary? You remember? <laughs> you said I was reluctant ever to accept anything new. You don't call that, Fanny? Well, when I saw the sample of this plastic holly wreath, I didn't hesitate a moment. No. I recognize at once what advantages there would be in always having your holly wreath where you could put your hands on. Here. You and mother and... and, and yeah, up to the minute. Yes, 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 yes. <coughs> like it? Well, you, you, you get off a little distance and you won't be able to tell it from the real thing, eh? Well, rather a pale green, isn't it, Henry? Huh? No, no, Fanny. It's the shadows in here. Uh, put the uh, life, uh, light on there, Clifford, the, the floor lamp. <laughs> I think he kind of went overboard with that plastic ribbon, didn't you, Dad? There, now. Uh, look at it in the light, Fanny. Eh? Better? Eh, Fanny? How much did you pay for that, Henry? Well, now, Fanny, when you consider that with care, it'll last for years. How much, Henry? Well, it isn't like a wreath that you use once and throw away. Yes, I know, Henry, but how much did it cost? Well, only $8. He was a young, hard-working uh, sophomore at Berkeley, a very deserving boy. And, uh... Well, I think it's just terrible, Henry. Huh? Look at it. 
It's cheap looking, Henry. Why, it's machine made. It's just awful. I, 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 I like it. You don't either like it. Now stop pretending. Now I won't put it on the door, Henry. That's fine. I simply won't do it. Eight dollars. They ought to be ashamed. We could hang him on the back door, maybe. What in the world's that, Father? Huh? Oh, oh, Hazel. I, uh, I've got a wreath for you. It's modernistic. Here you are, my dear. The wrapping paper's still here. I- I'll tie it up for you. Oh, 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 no, 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 thanks, Father. Thanks very much. But I always buy my wreaths, real ones, from the Girl Scouts. Little friends of Margaret's, you know. <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, now, Clifford, I like it. Hello, who's home? It's Gloria. Hey, Claude, we're in here in the library. Oh, coming. I'll put that awful thing out of sight, Henry. What a glorious day, isn't it? Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. Well, you are in a glow. Oh, God's in his heaven and all's right with the world. Mom? Dad? How are you, Hazel? Fine. How's my twin? Strike gold somewhere, Claude? Oh, the most wonderful thing happened. I wrote Nicky Airmail the other day, you know, and said we'd phone him Christmas. I asked him to give me a phone number where he'd be Christmas Day. Well, at two o'clock this afternoon, the phone rang, and a voice said, London, England, calling... And then there were some clipped British voices, and then he said, (laughs) he said, I say, old girl, what did you want my phone number for? So you could give me a ring. Oh, how wonderful. (laughs) Who was calling from where? Uh, Nicky? From England, Mom, from London. He was reading my letter, he said, and suddenly he just couldn't stand it anymore. He hadn't thought of calling us. It hadn't occurred to him until then. So he promptly put in a call, and in no time he said, there we were chatting as if he were right next door. So he's decided to call us here Christmas morning so he can talk to everybody. Frightfully expensive, isn't it? Well, I'd rather have a long-distance phone call than a plastic wreath, Henry. Much rather. Any time. <laughs> oh, he sounded just wonderful. He sent his love to everybody. And he can come home, he thinks, sometime in January. Oh, it was grand. You know, Hazel, when I heard him, I felt as if I'd just been holding my breath, waiting. Holding my breath until he got home again. Now I'm breathing once more. And it becomes you, Claudia. I told him his package arrived today. It did, you know, this morning. A big package. Presents for everybody. And he was relieved about that. No wonder you look thrilled, my dear. Oh, Mom. Oh, now at last I feel like putting up some Christmas decorations. Huh? Oh, I haven't done very much so far, Dad. But now I've got the Christmas spirit, too. Yes, yes. Well, well, I've got something right here for you, Claudia. Here. Hang this on the front door, eh? There's something to start with. What's this? Plastic. The latest thing, eh? It was either made by an honest, nearsighted old man in a basement, or it was machine-made by guys who just didn't care. We don't know what. <laughs> the young man. The sophomore from Berkeley, Dad. Was he the one? Huh? What's that, Claudia? Oh, terrific salesman, isn't he, Dad? Nicky bought two of them from him last year. Only he was a senior at Santa Clara then. <laughs> you say Nicky bought two of them? <laughs> yes, poor darling. Oh. <laughs> Dad, where are you going? I'm going to phone Jack. He can't afford a Christmas wreath anyway, so he'll be glad to have it. All right, I'll go get him on the phone. Be swell, Dad. Uh huh. Sure, come on over. Oh, Betty's downtown doing some Christmas shopping. Yeah. No, no, Nicolette's here. We're holding down the fort. Okay, Dad, I'll see you in a little while. Bye. <laughs> Dad said he had a new kind of Christmas wreath he wants to bring over. Oh, has he been making it? No, no, this is something special he bought. Thought it would look nice hanging on our front door. I think Betty said she was going to get a wreath while she was downtown today. Oh, was she? Gosh, I wish Dad had let us know sooner so we could have saved that dough. Yes. Jack, would you hand me that sewing basket there? Uh, Yeah. Here you are, Nicolette. Thank you. Oh, I've got all these clothes folded up. What can I do now? Nothing. Everything is just about done, except this little bit of mending. And I don't think you would be very good at doing that. I don't know. I've learned to do about everything else. Probably only a question of time before I'll be doing mending. Oh, Jack. <laughs> What's so funny? I can wash, I can iron, cook a little, scrub, and how? <laughs> make beds. In fact, I think I can qualify as an expert housewife, Nicolette. Yes, I think you could. It is pretty hard to have the responsibility of six small children, isn't it? Oh, I was only kidding. Gosh, you're the one who takes over most of the burden. I don't know what Betty and I would do if it weren't for you, Nicolette. 
We thank our lucky stars every night that you're with us. And I thank mine that I'm with you. So. Oh, I know you don't want me to keep talking about it, but gosh, Nicolette, we do feel kind of guilty sometimes the way you work around now, here. Now, Jack, I won't listen to that silly talk. If you okay, have Okay, the... okay. Now, just let me say one thing more, and then I'll drop it. What is that? Well, uh, Betty and I want you to know that, that we've felt that lately because of what's been happening, you might like to leave, and, and you won't because of us. What I'm getting at is we want you to feel free to do just as you please, to do whatever will make you happy, see? And what has been happening lately that I might want to leave? Oh, uh, well, maybe it's all my imagination. You but... mean because of Paul? Is that it? Well, yeah, I... I don't know quite how to say this, but we think Paul is crazy to pass up a wonderful girl like you. Jack, listen to me. I know exactly where I stand with Paul. We understand each other perfectly. We have for a long time. I have a deep, warm feeling for him that I shall never lose. We have a friendship which I will always cherish. But it does not go beyond that for either of us. So, if Paul is finding happiness with... Whatever is going to make him happy is going to make me happy, too. Can't you see that? There aren't many people in this world as unselfish as you are. Oh, I am not so unselfish. I work hard here because it gives me joy. And look what I get in return. I have a home. Something I never had in all my life. I have your and Betty's children... Who adore me. Who give me such love and affection as I never experienced. The whole Barbara family has taken me to its heart and given me security and a feeling of being wanted and needed. All of these are precious to me, Jack. They have repaid me a thousand times over for the little efforts I have made here in your home. Oh, I can see what you mean, all right, but I can't help... Oh, that must be Dad. Dan? Yes, yes. Nicolette and I are in here. Yeah. Get some of these wraps off. Yeah. Done up like a mummy. <laughs> Done up like a mummy, did he say? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Got enough clothes on for an Arctic expedition. Fanny insists on my putting on more wraps and mufflers. Oh, how are you, Nicolette, my dear? Oh, I'm just fine, Father Barber, thank you. Yes, yes, occupied as usual. Sit down, Dan. Yes, You said uh, Betty was out shopping, eh? Yeah, not many days before Christmas now. I told her I'd help Nicolette around home this afternoon if she'd take care of that end of it. I don't want any part of that crush. Betty loves to mill around in the stores at Christmas time, though. <laughs> Can't understand how anyone would like all that confusion being pushed and shoved about. Oh, there's an excitement about it, Father Barber. Everything is so gay and cheerful. It's been my observation that everybody looks pretty harassed about this time of year when you go to a store. Yeah, even Santa Claus. There's everybody in a hurry, clerks impatient, women walking up and down aisles, picking things up and dropping them without even looking at them, just to add to the general confusion. Yes, <laughs> Oh, where are all the children? Oh, speaking of confusion, huh? Hmm? The triplets are sleeping, Father Barber. The others went out to play right after they had their lunch. And let's let well enough alone. Peace, it's wonderful. Uh, say, where's that wreath you were going to bring over, Dan? Oh, oh, oh yes. I, I left it there in the hall when I took off my coat. Mm, I'll get it. Wait, uh, let me tell you about it first. It's a bit different than the ordinary run-of-the-mill sort of thing you see. Uh, modern. And, and very practical, too. Use it year after year, and always looks new. Just the sort of the thing for a young family that has to watch expenses. How interesting. Where did you get that, Father Bob? Oh, you just wait, Nicolette. Where do you see it? And they won't be common, either. No, sir. Can't pick up one of these in the store. Well, I'm going to go get it. You got me curious, Dad. Uh, right out here, huh? Yes, it's right by the hall chair, Jack. Is Mother Barbara uh, feeling well? Oh, well, well, it could be expected under the circumstances, I suppose. Well, I saw her yesterday. I thought she seemed fine. Oh, nothing that you can put your finger on. It's, it's just that Paul is keeping us all in a state of apprehension, more or less, wondering just what he's up to. His, uh, her very name is repugnant. Knowing how I feel about you, I'm sure you can understand uh, why. Where did Jack go? Jack? I'm coming. Yes, yes, probably out there admiring the wreath. Are you find it? Uh, yes, Dan. Of course, you must realize when you first see this uh, this uh, decoration, uh, Nicolette, this is different. It's, uh, uh, yes, uh, there we are. Uh, uh, what do you think of it, Jack? Well, it, it 
sure is different, isn't it? Exactly what I was saying to Nicola. Different, unusual. Oh, what is it? I mean, what is it made of, Father Barber? Plastic. Hand on the course. Nice blending of modern science and handicap. Well, Dad, I... Very reasonable, too, when you stop and think it'll last a lifetime. Oh, sure. But I just happened to think... Oh, I think I heard one of the triplets cry out. Excuse me, I'll run up and see if they're all right. Hmm? I didn't hear anything. I'll only be a second... Well, Jack, shall I help you? We can hang it on the door right now. Surprise Betty when she gets home. Well, that's what I was going to tell you, Dad. I just remembered that Betty is going to buy a wreath while she's downtown today. We won't be able to use two, so why don't you give this to somebody else? Yes, yes, sir. Well, I sure appreciate it, though. Did you buy it especially for us? If you did, we'll put it up and find another place for the one Betty gets. No, oh, as a matter of fact, I bought it thinking your mother would like it. <laughs> and didn't she? <laughs> no, she didn't. <laughs> You don't need it, eh? Well, it is a... It's a little corny, if you don't mind my saying so. <laughs> Something told me I'd been stuck after I bought it, but as your mother always says, I die hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do we do with it? <laughs> Plastic burns nicely, doesn't it? Might make a nice blaze for our Christmas fire, eh? <laughs> <laughs> All the packages right here on the big library table, Paul. <laughs> you poor man. You can hardly see over that low. Well, you can take a couple of these off the top, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> well, I put mine down. I'll help you. Oh, there. Now, I'll give you a hand, Santa Claus. Good. Now I have a little better vision. All uh, right, there'll be fine, Paul. Oh. oh, is that breakable? Oh, no. No harm done. Those are Sharon Ann's doll dresses. How can you tell? There are dozens of packages here. I've got them marked. <laughs> How would we be able to tell when we start wrapping if we didn't? I hadn't thought of it, I guess. I always used to have them gift wrapped at the store, and my worries were over. Oh, but don't you think it'll be a lot more fun to wrap them ourselves? We can make them much prettier than the store can. Well, I'm sure you can, Chris, but I warn you that I'm not going to be much help. When I try to wrap a package, I really butcher it. The paper gets all wrinkled, the stickers won't stick, the ribbon breaks, the pig won't jump over the style, and I shan't get home tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I think all this Christmas shopping has made you addled. <laughs> Wasn't it fun? Oh, it was wonderful. I don't know what I would have done without you, Chris. Shopping done for the whole family, and you helped me pick out the perfect gift for each one. I do hope they like everything. You know, it might be wise not to tell them I helped you, though. It might dampen their enthusiasm. Oh, Paul. Forget I said that. Can you? It was stupid. I wish there was some way I could convey to all of them the thought and interest that you put into each one of these gifts. Honestly, it's amazing how you seem to know just what was the right thing for everybody. I feel as though I know them, Paul. Well, I think I'll change into a comfortable dress and then we'll start to wrap. Hmm? I feel all gussied up in this outfit. You sure you're not tired? We can do this another time if you like. Oh, I'm not a bit tired, and I love to fix Christmas packages. <laughs> Maybe it's because I want to show you how clever I am at it. Fine. Well, I'll lick stickers. <laughs> <laughs> you sound pretty good. Oh, Rex, we didn't hear you come in. Hi, Rex. Hi, yourself. What are you going to do, open a branch store? I never saw so many packages. It'll help me do my Christmas shopping today. Oh, Rex, we got some adorable things for the children. What children? Paul's nieces and nephews. Huh. And there are quite a few of them, you know. Starting with Jack, you got six right there. <laughs> I'm sure they just love to know that you had anything to do with selecting the things. I'd better not tell them, Paul. Now, Rex, you just stop right now. Paul and I are all filled with a wonderful Christmassy feeling, and we're not going to have you dampen it. We've had a glorious day, and we're going to spend the rest of the afternoon doing packages, and we're going to have fun doing it. So you just run along if you're not in the holiday spirit. What a sister, eh, Paul? Don't you love it the way she tells me off? Ever done it to you? Not yet. I think she's been tempted, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to change. You can talk about me while I'm gone. I won't be long, Paul. All right. <laughs> Christmas. You really like it, Paul? Sure. I'm crazy about Christmas, aren't you? It depresses me. The whole holiday season depresses me. I, I feel as though I want to be off on a mountaintop all alone until it's over. Why do you feel that way, do you suppose? Oh, I guess it's because we had such miserable Christmases when we were kids. No money for presents. Never asked any of the houses around here to see the trees and all the grand decorations. Chris would get some kids cast off doll here in the neighborhood. Your mother sent over one of Cliff's suits he didn't wear anymore for me one Christmas, I remember. <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. 
gave me a feeling that the whole thing was a farce. That it was unfair for all the kids around Seacliff to have so much when, well, we didn't have anything. It made me bitter and <laughs> I've never been able to get over it, that's all. Doesn't seem to have made Chris bitter. Haven't I been telling you that gal was something special? You don't need to tell me. I found it out for myself. I think you have. You know, if you hadn't liked Chris, I, I couldn't have gone on liking you, Paul. That's how crazy I am about my sister. You asked why she didn't become bitter. I wish I knew. I'd take the treatment. She has ten times more reason to be bitter than I have. She not only had miserable Christmases as a kid, but... You know how she spent most of her holidays all the time she was married to Stu Abbott? In hotel rooms. Trying to sober him up enough to take a look at the pathetic little tree she'd gone out and bought. She stuck with that rotter. Stuck with him even after she knew she didn't love him because she felt she might get him off that bottle some way, somehow. I tell you, Paul, I, I could kill anybody who would hurt that girl after what she's been through. I can understand how much you love her, Rex. Can you? Can you really, Paul? If Rex, I thought... you look much too serious for the Christmas season. We will dismiss you, Rexy, if you lead up our party. <laughs> oh, okay, teacher. <laughs> he wasn't leadening things up, Chris. Uh, he was being very interesting. He was telling me what Christmas was like when you and he were kids. Oh, no. Rex, why do you have to go into that? You know, he loves to get way down in the depths and be tragic. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on, don't pout, Rex. And give me a kiss because I love you. Neurotic as you are. <laughs> okay, give me some paper. I'll even wrap presents. No, no, I don't trust you with that. That's only for an artist's hands. You can be a flunky with me. When my mouth gets dry, you can lick Christmas seals. <laughs> we'll let Rex hold the knot with his finger while I tie the boxes. You keep on like this and you lose me altogether. I'm no menial. I have me service to tend to those tasks, I'll have you know. Okay, Mr. Gottrocks, just sit back while I get these packages sorted. Now, uh, let's see... Oh, Paul, help me get the children's packages all in one pile, huh? Right. Here, Rex. Oh, look, I want you to see. Look at this paper I found to do up the young one's presents. Oh, wait, wait till I open it. Isn't that adorable? Oh, I think the wrappings are more beautiful this year than I've ever seen them. Oh, Paul, where's all the ribbon we bought? Oh, here we are, right here in this bag. Oh. See how efficient I am, Rex? Isn't that amazing? <laughs> no question about it. What do I get to lick? I feel out of things. Oh, the stickers don't come for a long time yet. But you're rusty. You better start getting in training. Have you warmed up yet? Don't worry about me, coach. I'll be right in there pitching until the last whistle blows. <laughs> <laughs> you're both a little mad. You know that, don't you? You got those stack, Paul? Yep. Mission completed. All right. Now, let's start with Jack's children, shall we? Might as well go about it systematically. Okay. Does it matter which one? Or shall I just pick at random? Oh. Let's see. Um, Mary Lou, how's that? Fine. Hmm. Good. Now, you can be writing the card while I wrap. We'll make a production line out of this. All right, let's see. Cards, cards, where, where have the little cards gone? <laughs> this guy's a nut, Chris. Is that what Christmas does? Ah, <laughs> uh, here we are. Uh-oh, no pen. Oh, that's right. Now, there's a job for you at last, Rex. There's a pen right there on the desk, Chris. Dry. I tried it last night. Get yours like a good boy, huh? Or get mine if you like. It's right inside my little desk. Have no fear. I'll come back with something. Oh, that's beginning to look wonderful, Chris. Mm hmm? Put your finger on the knot, will you? Mm-hmm. Thank you. You can take your hand away now. I don't want to. What? If I leave it there, you have to touch me. You have such beautiful hands, Chris. So delicate and yet so strong and efficient. They've become strong from playing the piano. Have you loved today, Paul, as much as I have? Really loved it? Yes. And I loved it because I was with you. And because I love you. I love you, Paul. Chris, I have a box here in my pocket. You want me to wrap it? No, it's not a Christmas gift. It's a ring I want you to wear. It's a ring that says I want you to be my wife. Will you? Yes, Paul, I'll wear your ring. I'll wear it proudly, ever so proudly.
just heard Chapter 12, Book 72 of One Man's Family. Written, produced, and transcribed under the direction of Carlton E. Morse. Chapter 13, entitled Christmas Morning with the Barbers, will come to you next week at this same time. What's on NBC today? Comedy by Phil Harris and Alice Fay, and great drama on Theater Guild on the Air. Maurice Evans and Edna Best recreate their original Broadway roles in the Browning version today on Theater Guild. There's always good listening on NBC, so keep tuned here. One Man's Family came to you from California. Now stay tuned for the Quiz Kids on NBC.